recurring dreams I had as a child. I would be playing like a Game Boy or Sega Genesis. I was a child when I was having these dreams, so it was like old school Sega kind of thing. But I would just be like at a house or somewhere and playing the game and then the screen would swirl and I would transport into a secondary reality on Earth where everyone was aliens except me. And everybody looked like humans, but I knew they were all aliens and they were all against me, even my family. I remember the end being like me getting in the back of the Cadillac that our family, a version of, or one of the Cadillacs that our family had. We had a lot of Cadillacs from the 70s growing up. And me sitting in the middle seat in the back with my family and then the camera, like, it's a camera shot of the car driving away and I'm in the back seat and I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna die. My name's Angel Deridorian. My band is called Deridorian. I'm from Sacramento originally, but I've moved around a lot. I'm a musician. <laughs> when I create, I need to be alone. What? So, um, I think with any kind of creative work for myself, it's very much about introspection. It's a lot about like digging into emotional self, philosophical self, um, and then trying to actualize that in some kind of tangible form. I'm more easily able to focus if there's no one around me. <laughs> if it's my own stuff I'm making. I'm very interchangeable in that way. I played in bands for so long that I know how to work with people. And then writing with people is pretty easy. It's good. It always feels good to like work off of someone else and you come up with ideas faster. The hardest is working alone, but I feel like it's the most rewarding. I can write a song in like 10 minutes, or I can, it'll take me like a month. Depends like on the production or like having how much I want to change the structure or how like vocal harmonies might need to be written or changed. So it's constantly changing. I feel the most free when I sing long drones, long notes that just repeat over and over again. It kind of takes care of multiple realities. So if I'm not on drugs, okay. <laughs> I would say that is what I like to do. So sometimes I'll, when I sing in the drone style, I'll have an instrument that I drone with, like harmonium or mm -hmm. guitar on that song. And then that's like the constant note. And then the vocal line, I'll kind of move around, but I'll always come back to the root note. <laughs> when I'm up there on stage, I'm thinking a lot of things. One is, I hope the sound guy doesn't hate me. <laughs> fucks, and fucks up the set for me. Uh, when I'm on stage, I'm thinking about just playing the music, mostly. I'm comfortable now performing, and it's about bringing very strong energy. It's, it's a comfort zone, even though it's always different performing. Every show is different. It's still like one of the more comfortable things for me, so I, I can relax. Alice Coltrane is my spiritual guide because she is spirit. She is like a pure form of energy and a conduit for spirituality from the universe. Depending on the record, you can just feel so much energy coming from it, but it's very colorful music. It's pretty abstract. I don't see a lot of like images as much as I see the like, colors. 
the tones she uses, again, resonate on a very physical, spiritual level. She doesn't sing that much, but when she does, it's just like, oh, from her heart. I mean, she's just glowing. She's so beautiful. And I think she went into an ashram in her later years of life. And that's why she's wearing the sari. And this record's really cool because it's the first Alice record I bought. And this record's really cool because it's really split on either side. Very different sounding record. It's just like two records. One uh, side's much more like playful and one side sounds more spiritual in this case I mean it's just like the the heightening and expansion of consciousness basically and trying to achieve that while living on earth and you can do that with music so <laughs> okay this is my Aleister Crowley record I found in Pittsburgh <laughs> that I couldn't not buy. <laughs> I really like occult mysticism studies and Aleister Crowley is really interesting because I, I feel like he's very associated with dark magic and satanic magic, but he also has like this other side to him that's very light and very seemingly positive. He's just an interesting character. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> this yeah. is such a crazy record. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything on the back with on there? On the back is... A sticker. Oh, whatever. I wish the recording quality was better, but what can you do? The monster lives in a key. Monster is... Where is that? Where's the back in the Where did everybody go? <laughs> Nobody wants to play with me. <laughs>